Uh, all right. Uh, another Sunday, another state of mind. Let me get comfortable. If you like what you see, uh, hit the subscribe button right here because we're trying to climb it, climb it, climb it, climb it, climb it. Climb it. Um, I have somebody here. His name is Riff Hutton. He's been acting for a long time. I think since 1970, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, I know him from, from General Hospital. He played Lenny. And, you know, that was a storyline that, well, I'll get into it in a second with him, but he, he, made, he made me going to work a pleasure every day. How you doing, buddy? I'm great. I, I, man, I'm really honored to, uh, to be here. Um, that experience of playing Lenny and getting to work with you and Joyce ranks up there with, as one of the best ever wow. in my book. Uh, you, sir, you, you may have heard it before, but uh, I would get lost in your performances a lot of times. <laughs> I'd be on stage just watching you and think, holy, I won't use a profanity. Well, you can, but, it's YouTube, but go Okay, I, holy shit, how's he doing this? The things that you do as an actor, I've, I'm always fascinated by actors anyway. I, I, yeah, they're, it's fascinating. They're fascinating people on and off. Yeah. and. Uh, so getting to watch you, I was always like, all right, there's a story, there's a Maurice story that I wanted to know, just like, all right, there's a reason why he can, you know, that's that's not like something that you pick up in acting class. There's a little bit more that, uh, there's a life class You know, class that's there. interesting, that's interesting. Uh, wow, we're going right there, that's beautiful, I love this. Um, with me, it was, I think everything that I've been through, I'm going to get emotional on this thing. I know it because he makes me emotional. You have to understand something. The great thing about this, let's just, let's just get in it. You never acted with Sonny. No. <laughs> That's right. That is absolutely right. You never acted with Sonny. <laughs> now, you think Mike was cool. Sonny's a, like an animal because of different energy. But you've never even, yeah. you know, we've never done that. Now, I've ha I've been able to observe you and, yes. and see the show and, yes, and yeah. see you as It's Sonny. a different guy, man. But a very different yeah. cat, yeah. Because Mike, I played Mike with this kind of calm, cool... Unless he got angry, but he didn't get angry too much. Yeah. But this personality of just everything's cool, everything's fine, whereas Sonny's all chaos. It's the two C's, right? Right. One's chaos, one's calm. That's how I kind of did it. Now, as far as, now he's interviewing me. That's the <laughs> best. I love it. Um, it was just, you know, with me, as an, uh, becoming an actor at, a tw at 21 years old, I just had to do it because I think if I didn't do it, I'd have been in big trouble, either yeah. in jail or dead. And I, You're the same I'm way? I'm the same way. Yeah. Same way. That there, were, there were a few choices in, in my life I, in that it, it seemed like anyway Yeah. Uh, at the time that it that here were the two paths. I, I was either going to run the streets right. uh, of Newark, New Jersey, or I was going to take this other turn and, and try to do something uh, positive and, and creative. Now, when you start acting, this is what it said wherever research, that you were homeless too, or was that? Yes. Uh, my period of homelessness lasted a about a year, maybe a little bit longer. It's hard to, it's so long ago. Though I tell you, it, it, one of my sort of recurring nightmares that I have every so often when I'm stressed out 
is I will have this nightmare that everything that's happened since, all the success, all the good things, all just a dream, and I wake up and I'm sleeping on top of a movie theater once again out of a cardboard box. And it's like, but now I'm old. Wow. You know? And it's, it's like a freak out. Then I, I wake up in a panic. <laughs> My wife does the, you know. Yeah. Okay, it's all right. No, it, you know, you made it. You're out. Um, you know. Oh, man. Yeah, I think um, uh, we both may wind up getting emotional here today, but. A lot of what is it like? Man? My experiences have informed my life later. I, I, there are people who lose hope. Oh, you never lost hope, and I never lost hope. Wow, how does that happen? I think a lot of it comes from uh, you still had serendipity, maybe, yeah, or. Yeah. Um, because you came out here wanting to be an actor, and that's when you, or was before? Um, I came out here wanting to be an actor. And, uh, and it didn't? And, and things just uh, wow. sort of went south. I, you know, of course, planning um, a life and planning how to navigate yeah. at that young age, you don't know, really have no yeah. idea of like, yeah. Of what things cost and how quickly you can burn through money and what it so um and i had my demons uh, you know uh, i mean at that time uh, was there know. any drugs or alcohol or? yeah uh, alcohol mostly and i come from a family of that oh uh though god bless them i they are my heroes um, but we were uh, a deeply dysfunctional bunch. Um, you know, my mom, who I consider a saint, and my father, I consider a saint. All well, the man who raised me—I don't know my biological dad, but oh, the man who raised wow. me, um, I consider a saint as well. But you know, nowadays they would be clinically. Everything from A to Z, because they, they had it all. What about mental health? Anything mental illness? Um, my mom was bipolar. No. And my dad was uh, what they call now is PTSD. Uh, What's PTSD like? Uh, that must well, be that must be a mother, man. You know, as a kid looking at it from the outside, here's what we were always told was that my dad had been in a war, that uh, he was a war hero, and that it, the the quote was, your father's seen things. Yeah, because th back then, we, no one wanted to admit <laughs> anything, man. Now, so, I'm, I'm yeah. like proud talking to him. <laughs> so that was, that was the story we got. Your dad has seen things. So uh, when my dad would do things and snap, everybody would just be like okay now as kids you're scared shitless yeah um I, you know frightened beyond belief but your uh, this is your assurance is that it's just that he's seen things and uh and that's why because he's, of the service yeah and, yeah of course yeah, and then he would just do stuff and then i thankfully had older brothers who had seen it before me and uh, they had a way of making humor out of it. Oh. And, and so that we collectively sort of leaned on each other to say, did your dad get through it? Did your dad know it was PTSD or did they just called it? He's seen things. <laughs> <laughs> no, he did not know. It was oh, he did no, not know. No, he just would, you know, they're, There'd be a moment, and there were just like a light, and you could see it sometimes. Damn, yeah. And the eyes, yeah. His eyes would go, and it'd be like, "What the?" And then it was like, "Okay, get the f back." Did you he know, take that. it out on you guys at all? On occasion. Yeah, that's the um, tough. That's the tough part. You know, and then he would, 
rage. And I think my mom got most of it. Uh, And then on occasion, an unfortunate neighbor or somebody who showed up at the front door to deliver something at the wrong time. Um, And the, the police would come, but... Everyone sort of knew his, yeah, and so yeah, they, so they it just kind of <laughs> that's the way you know it wasn't a yeah. it's yeah, like, it oh, like, we understand yeah. PTSD, he yeah. was in the service, okay, we uh, okay, it. all right, yeah, but man, can yeah. you imagine like I can't imagine, you know, I've been I've been on my same lithium for 30 years, I've had was it a mental institution, and but uh, I've had three nervous breakdowns, but I haven't had one in 30 years because of lithium. Yeah. So in that time, it was more the cops would come. Oh, it's fine. Yeah. We understand. We understand. But nobody says there's help, you know. Yeah. No. no. And your there's mom no bipolar. Thing. Yeah. Like me. Yeah. So she had manic episodes. Yeah. And she wasn't taking anything. No, no. So, Not until. Oh, I, I mean, her seventies. You know, I mean, Dang. 60, late 60s, 70s, you know, finally. And she started she got, getting help? She got help, yeah. But that's beautiful that at least she's getting help at that age. Yeah. But all that time, yeah. you saw things and yeah. and you didn't know what it was. N- no. But but you knew it was off Yeah. and weird or strange, whatever, because I did. Some, but you just kind of watched and just, it was kind of, uh, was it? The norm, but not the norm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. This that bizarre, dysfunctional sort of norm. Uh, but you know, you love your parents. Yeah. And I actually love them even more now. Because they went through the. Because they went through it, and they got to another side, and actually, when finally, society said, "Here's help for you." They went and got him. Beautiful. That's yeah. the, yeah. And, yeah. And, and so uh, we were able to have, in the, the latter part of their lives, uh, we were able to have some, some beautiful moments. Yeah, you know, my, I told you, my dad passed away. And two moments with my mom and my dad that were beautiful is I confronted my dad about, abuse and he said he was sorry uh, and it was just a great moment and then my mom she eventually admitted that she needed help for depression or whatever you know whatever she's going through and she's 80 man or 70 I don't know how, in her 80s and I thought wow that's a beautiful moment for somebody in their 80s to say and she just recently, my mom, which was great, I'm on the phone and she goes, I gotta talk to, I gotta talk to my psychiatrist. And I thought, oh, you're, I didn't even, cause we haven't been talking about that. And I was, and I got off the phone and I said, wow, right on. Yeah. yeah. It's a beautiful. A amazing thing for, especially for people of that generation that older generation, where so much negative, uh, you know, oh, oh, you're seeing a, a psychiatrist, oh, yeah. you know, there was all of that, that, and, and, yeah, and for men to admit some kind of thing would mean, oh, weak. you're, yeah, you're weak. Yeah. Um, Man, it's not, it, it's, when it's none of that. It's you know? none of that. And yeah. and the reason that w- w- everybody should get help, just not for yourself, but for everybody around you that you're hurting. Yeah. If you don't want to do it for you, I want to do it for me because it's painful, bro. <laughs> it's painful, man, <laughs> to feel that yeah. your mind is in chaos. But, some people don't want to do it 
for a lot of reasons, but they don't want to do it for themselves, then do it for the people who love you, who you're hurting all the time because you're not getting help. Let's go on a lighter note. We'll sure. Go, we could go back to this. Um, <laughs> you were a Klingon. Oh, my God, yeah. What I want to know. Four hours of makeup. <laughs> that's what I want to know. <laughs> ah, man. Oh, getting, How it, was getting it on in the morning, you know, getting all that four stuff. Four hours? Um, maybe a little less. Maybe Star Trek, like the three. next generation, or the yeah. new generation. What was it? The, the next generation. <laughs> Um, yeah, the, you know, the skull piece and all that, and the beard. and Every all the, morning? And throwing all that on. And then uh, getting used to, yeah. Because you build up a little heat inside all of that plastic. Yeah, yeah. And um, my head would sweat. I don't know about other people, but I'd get sweat, and it would collect down here along the back, because that's where it was glued, the headpiece was glued on. And sure enough, at some point during the workday, the glue would come undone, and I would get this like, no, <laughs> just like cold sweat going down, <laughs> dripping down from my head, down my back. And it would always happen at the worst time. You know, you're right in the middle of like some line <laughs> and you're trying to concentrate. And down the middle, you're like, woo, woo, woo. And it, oh, shit. Ah, ah, ah. And then did it make you forget your line? Or? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But it's for really, uh, how many good. weeks did you have to do that for? Um, I wasn't there long. I was, it was like two weeks. So two like, weeks of makeup every yeah. four hours. Yeah, the best was well, actually one day I had uh, in the middle of it. I've, I've been blessed for a long, long time with a, a great voiceover career, and um, so in the middle of it, we had I had a client, and they were saying, "Can you get over to this studio and and record some spots? We'll get you in, get you back over to Paramount in no time. You know, just you know, yeah, said, okay." Well, let me find out when my lunch is, and I'll talk to the AD. And they said, oh, yeah, okay, you just let us know. We're going to make this happen. So I let them know. I'm in all this makeup. There's no way to get all that off. So I just drive over to Margarita Mix in Hollywood from Paramount as a Klingon, park, get out of the car, and here I am. And, you know, they have no. these lips. So you're like four feet inches Four inches, I should say, not four feet. Four inches taller Tall. than what you really are. So here I am walking along as, as six six down the street, Klingon, full Klingon. Wow. <laughs> and cars are just like ee, 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 ee. And, went in and, and did my thing, and they, they were all like, "Whoa, that's great." <laughs> um, Doogie Howser, you did. Yeah, serendipity had me read for the one part, and they said would you mind reading for this other part? And it's stressful enough to, yeah. just for the one. And then, so I went out in the hall and uh, going over it and going over it and uh, said, okay, I'm ready. Go on in and do the best I can. This is my moment. Uh, go in, do the part. I went up on one of the key lines and just laughed. That, that's all I could do is laugh. And it was because of the laugh that they hired me. Wow. And that's then cool. I got that work on that uh, show for four years. You were on it for four years? Yeah, yeah. As a recurring. What? So in and out, there's Dr. Ron Welch. And uh, I, I was supposed to be one of the new residents who was sort of on par with wow. Doogie, so I got to do a lot and of And Doogie uh, was... Uh, Neil at that time yeah, was, yeah. Uh, you know, the brand new. He was, yeah, tween. That's amazing. <laughs> um, yeah. So I want to talk to you about General Hospital. Yeah. It is. Just because a lot went on. So you know that during the Alzheimer's story, my dad got Alzheimer's. Yes. So it was almost like 
Yeah, I don't know. Life imitating art, art imitating life, whatever you want to call it. And, 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 and at that time, when I came, the second time, but, you know, I remember I had to come back from anxiety that I talked to you about. Um, if they had call, if GH had called me a month earlier, I wouldn't have been able to work. That's how bad the anxiety was. Um, so I went back and I did it. Then And then the Mike story started, the Nixon Falls. Now you have to know, this Nixon Falls was not popular because fans just like, Go back. We want Sonny. We want Sonny. Right. We want Sonny. So Cynthia and I, I told her, I said, let's just have fun. We're on, a, we're on our own island. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Right? It was yeah. just us four. Yeah. And it was, so we just did, you know, I knew it, it, that, the, that the audience, you now people are wondering how I knew. I just have a connection with the audience. I really do. So I kind of knew it wasn't working, but I'm going to have fun. Um, and then, interesting enough, towards the end, pretty much around where you died, I started to see a shift, and people kind of liking it, and I knew it, because the, the scenes that we had were so deep and rich, yeah. That I said, man, I think the audience may have a different little. Th and sure enough, it, as as I went back to Sunny, and now it seems like that made whatever we're doing now work. I'm mm -hmm. sure there's a bunch of the audience who hates, you know, that you were ever my. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is fine, but that's I'm just uh -huh. giving you the lowdown. But the amazing part was that Lenny got diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. And then my dad got diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. Lenny died, and my dad dies. I mean, uh, that only happened. That doesn't happen. Yeah. You don't have a story, and then somebody that you love, you know, has the same illness, and then another story. <laughs> And then gets to that illness, and dies, and then die. That doesn't happen in in in, in acting, really. It just. But the the day that you died, it was very painful for me. And so now that I speak to you. It almost brings back that moment a bit, yeah. Because that's where I go to as an actor. Yeah. You get me. So, what what when the day that you died and and Joyce did that beautiful scene where she cried? Oh. How was that for you? What, what, first of all, talk about the. You already kind of talked about how the story was, but towards that last month, how was it for you? Um, there was a mix of emotions that last month. Obviously, I didn't want to leave GH. Right. Uh, I was just having such a, a great time with you guys being around all of you. Um, at the same time, we were getting an opportunity to do dialogue and work together and do stuff that was just yeah. mind-blowingly rich. And uh, so deep with emotion, and uh, that I I would just come home really floating on a cloud after you know getting a chance to work with you. Actually, the the day that we actually wound up doing the stuff, and it even now, I was an emotional wreck. Really? Oh. Uh, and all I really had to do <laughs> was sit in the chair yeah, there I know. and be dead. But you and Joyce and Cynthia, I go back to it now and it yeah. just tears me up. It, yeah. it tore me up. It tore me up. It was beautiful, just beautiful stuff, beautiful human 
real emotion. And uh, as much as I was, you know, went home to my wife and I said, man, I, I'm going to miss that. But wow, what a way to, yeah. you know. I mean, we, you, you know, you have to understand because, you know, I don't know how many soaps you've done or whatever, but we had a, you had a great run. Yes. Nine months. I don't know how many, yeah. eight months. And you don't really get, and like I said, we were on our own island. That doesn't usually happen. It, it, I don't think it's ever happened to me in 28 <laughs> years. I'm always the island, <laughs> not on my own island. Everybody's on my island. Uh, right. That was the first time that I was playing somebody different. Right. So you. That was the first time you played somebody other than Sonny's Sonny? always been Sonny. Sonny. Yeah. I mean, outside of the soap, I've done, you know, things. Right, right. But, I but mean, not on, on the show. Shit. Not wow. in 28 years. Oh, my God. This has been great, man. Uh, Awesome. All right. I'm going to, I want to, I want you to ask me a question or okay. two, if you, whatever you want. Just yep. say. Question number one. Where do you see the Sonny character, the Mike Sonny character going? What's, what's that? I mean, obviously the writers don't tell you everything. Well, they, they, if I want them to, they would. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. I thought it was, you know, like a but surprise I, to you. Like I it used is to be that guy who needed to know, but now I don't. I just let. It. I got to be honest with you. G General Hospital right now, and I know fans are controversial and hating, loving, and all that, but they're doing a great job of a everything that I've been doing. I don't question. Everything is justified. They're mm -hmm. connecting the dots really well. I'm going through, Sonny's going through a manic episode. I got to tell you, I showed my wife the scenes because my wife, she's not, my wife is the greatest, but she doesn't really watch anything. So I had to kind of like tie her down to watch me do these scenes that I'm kind of proud of, right? And she she was really into it. And, I, and it, I've done, I did a movie where I played bipolar. I did uh, GH, many stories of bipolar. This is the first time that I've watched myself and said, oh, man, that's as closest to what, what I would say is bipolar to me that I, that I play. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I think it has to do with the way they wrote it. Incredible writing. Yeah, it was good, oh, man. It was good. Um, so, yeah. And then my other question for you, you've had... An incredible run. Yes. On on General Hospital. Do you ever like think the end yeah. is coming? Yeah. They're gonna oh, I never think they're gonna end it, but I'm gonna end it. That you're gonna end it. Yeah. I I, I because And does that come from like something inside you saying, I just can't Yeah, I, I th there are times where, I can't go there with the emotions yeah, anymore. I yeah. can't. I can't. I just recently, I went up to Frank Valentini, his office, and I said, I can't act anymore, man. I don't want to do this shit. I just can't. It hurts. It's painful. Stress. Yeah. Can't. I can't go. I can't. Because you I, go into some places that's, inside. Right. That, that it's, are, you know. <clears throat> yeah. It's like, I, I, I give the example like a boxer. You, if a boxer was boxing for almost 30 years and getting hit and, <laughs> Eventually, he's going to say, you know, I don't want to get hit anymore. Right, right. When you're young, yeah. I, 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 I could take anything. Oh, give me more. Give me more. I'll go deeper. I'll go deeper. Now, I, I said, he goes, well, how are you going to make a living? I said, well, I'll, if state of mind keeps going the way it's going and I got other things here, maybe I can do that. He goes, but he said something that was very smart. He said, but this GH is helping that. If you're not on GH, yeah. then yeah. And then a week later, I'm I'm mm. I'm good again. Yeah, you're loving it all. But there's been it, there was a point before too with with my career where I had to do other stuff and I I could not get anything. I could not 
Right. Yeah. I, and I'm I'm sure that happens because you are so known. Yeah, as, but as, and to, to I don't then even know if that do something yeah. else. Here's what I say, and I think I've said this before, but I'll say it again. Being on a soap, as well known as I am, I'm always that guy, the soap guy, who probably isn't that good because they don't know what yeah. I do. I don't know. And I always say, and maybe you'll, you'll understand this, on every set that you get to do something on, there's always, or at least for me, there's always a scene where you shut everybody up. Right? So they think I'm the soap guy. If they think, you know, I played John Gotti. I played. But there's always a scene where I'll do something and you can feel the energy change. Right. And oh, yeah. Th and then they go, oh, yeah. this is not just. Right. Whatever that means, the soap, because mm -hmm. it's ridiculous. We have because great it, actors mm -hmm. on soap operas, and, every, and one take, right. we got to do it. Right. But that's how what I have found, and and uh, but I there's for me, General Hospital's family, it's a great job, and um, I I just got my wife's got to just you know tell me to shut up or, you know what I mean? It's like. And then I've got to ask this okay. one more question. Right. I'll, I'll leave it at this. Having done this role and gone here, here, up there, down here, is there is there anything that you would go to the writers, producer Frank, and say, "Hey, can Sonny do this?" Is there something that that you haven't had a chance to do on GH that you go to them and say, "Hey, hey." Why don't we let him try that? And there was one time I was on a bed, the producer came in and I said, you know, I saw a commercial with Mel Gibson where he's like, I want my fucking kids. Ransom, that movie. Oh, yes. And I said, I said, can you imagine if Sonny's kids got kidnapped? And they did it. And it was one of the, supposedly one of the highest rated stories. It was great because it involved everybody. My ex, all the mothers of my kids. I got about <laughs> four or five mothers. You know. Uh, yeah, it, Sonny it, sown some oats. You know what I mean. <laughs> I think he's too old now. Then. Uh, all right, brother. Listen, it's, right, been, it's been beautiful, man. Thank you. Thank it, you for the time. Thank nah. you for inviting me to be here, man. Much love. It's, Much it's, love, it always. Was, it was real. Yeah. It was simple and sweet. And I appreciate it. Yeah. Hey. All right. Likewise. Thank you, man. Next week. We're going to have Haley Poulos. Uh, she's coming on, and she's, it's, it's a beautiful talk about social media and all kinds of stuff. Wait till you hear Haley.